what I'm going to talk about today uh, is how how we at Hot are trying to build technologies to support, uh, for specifically in a humanitarian context, but also in sort of the other like you know open uh, as an open technology organization and open context. Um, how we're getting information from the Earth, from the planet, on the left side of this uh, of this little uh, animate or this little uh, graphic, all the way into uh, OpenStreetMap because um, you know I don't need to explain the benefits of OpenStreetMap and why it, it being an open platform is good to to this crowd. But um, as we all know, um, how we're getting you know from the planet to the planet.osm file, uh, and at Hot. We make it really. We maybe make it a little complicated, but um, there are a lot of of tools and things and ways uh, of of getting from that from from A to B from the left side into OSM. Um, I'm not going to go over everything here. That's some of this is outside of the scope. Um, I'm primarily going to focus on the the left side of the of the graphic here of how we're actually getting that imagery, how we're processing that imagery, uh, or, or what tools we use to process that imagery. Um, and how we are making it open and uh, promoting sort of openness, the openness of imagery for and, and, and the benefits of that. And then, of course, uh, uh, maybe many of you are uh, familiar with the tasking manager. I'm going to very briefly talk about one of our uh, probably the most well known tool that HOT um, has put out in the past few years, the tasking manager, um, and a little bit about uh, machine learning as well. Uh, so that's kind of broadly what this talk is going to be about. Um, there we go. Uh, so, uh, what, how do we get imagery in, in general? Um, uh, I think there are probably many ways, but the two big ones that are, have been on the, on the mind of many people or have been in the, in the industry are satellite providers, uh, which are, you know, very large scale relative. Uh, is where much of the imagery that goes there. These are made accessible to mappers through um, open data programs or open licensing um, or um, somewhat open, uh, openly accessible uh, means. Um, we're talking about uh, Maxar, we're talking about Bang Imagery, um, we're talking about some other um, providers of imagery. Uh, much of this imagery is not open data. Um, uh, a lot and, and so there's this sort of hole in when we do a lot of this mapping when when we are creating data uh, in OpenStreetMap of yes we're creating data that is that is open data but the source of that data is not open and that um, that can that can present challenges um, both uh, sort of our from those of us who look at um, the type of mapping we do from a philosophical standpoint but also practical challenges as well um, then there's this brand, not brand new, probably, I'm going to say in the, in the last five years, very explosive um, UA, UAS systems, uh, drone mapping, um, very high resolution imagery. We're talking about like cent centimeter grade imagery uh, at a much smaller scale, spatial scale, um, but created at low cost and a rapid pace. Um, the access and tooling for creating uh, maps and uh, imagery from, from oblique drones uh, has improved greatly over the past few years. Um, there's a lot of services that are provided um, for going, you know, flying the drone, doing the flight planning, creating, uh, creating these um, uh, these data sets, and and doing a lot of the processing in in the cloud or uh, on on your own computer if you have the means. Um, but the barrier for that is has has greatly lowered, um, and the ability to create open data is. Uh, much greater because these tools are in our hands, um, and at Hot, we really like that because um, we can put. You know, one of the things we value is building local capacity, and we're working in places with um, low bandwidth. We're working in places um, with um, uh, that are rural, that are hard to access, have have low um, uh, lower cost of living, um, and being able to uh, get this type of imagery. Um, relatively cheaply, especially compared to um, try, trying to get uh, yesterday's um, satellite pre pre disaster and today's satellite post disaster, uh, it's uh, it, it just it, it 
it changes the game. Um, and I think that's uh, something that's really, um, uh, it's, it is steadily growing and uh, it's, it's becoming much easier to, to, to use. So that's where I think I'm gonna focus uh, today, talking a little bit more about drone mapping. Um, at least the imagery that's created from drones. We're not really going to cover how to how to get a drone. Um, so we moving away from taking off my my hot hat and putting on a different hat. Uh, open Drone Map is not a, a hot hot OSM tool, but it is an open source FOSS tool that's actively developed um, by many of my colleagues. I used to work on Open Drone Map uh, many years ago. Um, and uh, it is a collection of an uh, ecosystem of tools that are used for doing photogrammetry. Uh, what do we mean by photogrammetry? Taking drone imagery and uh, turning it into different 3D and 2D products. So you can see here some uh, some orthophoto or orthorectified imagery, some three-dimensional uh, point clouds and, and, and surfaces, and also uh, DSM. Uh, just some examples. Of, of what can be done with Open Drone Map, you can see on the left, very classic, a uh, an or, a, a fairly um, high seventy hectares of uh, of a field, uh, which may, may not be interesting to map, but uh, could be interesting for other means, uh, for other reasons like NDVR things like that, as well as some uh, uh, DSM um, point clouds, which you can do other uh, sort of uh, very interesting. Uh, ge ge geometric calculations on, as well as NDVIs. Uh, you can look at 3D services for um, uh, doing uh, analysis of building heights, for adding that kind of level data to OpenStreetMap, um, or or getting sort of um, potentially even like surf uh, a wall surface or, or rooftop surface or things like that, or doing other types of analyses. And uh, you can even 3D print a house. Um, uh, with with the data from Open Drone Map, um, Open Drone Map is uh, relatively easy to use. Uh, like I said, we're not going to cover how to fly a drone here, but um, you can get a drone, or you can download some test data. You can download the software. Um, uh, there's a per there's a license there. I'm not going to sell it because I don't uh, I'm not I'm not involved necessarily in Open Drone Map. But uh, you select the images and and you and you go get uh, an espresso and and watch it work. Um, this is the tool. Um, as you can see, there's three projects here. I'm stealing. I'm stealing some slides from uh, Phosphor G Italy. If anyone was there, um, so you might you might recognize these. I'm not stealing. It's open source. Uh, I'm, I'm utilizing them. Um, you select the images. Uh, you process the images, um, and uh, you wait. Uh, once you get that, you get some very interesting stuff um, that's just within the app. Um, you get the, the GeoTIFF file. Uh, you get um, you can you can do transformations uh, uh, and and um, do some some uh, algorithmic changes on that if you're interested in that kind of stuff. Um, you can look at sort of the three dimension the three D products um, if that so interests you. Um, uh, and and how it works on the on the back end if if you're so interested. I'm really going to cover this very briefly, but. Um, there's two key technologies, structure from motion, uh, um, which is made by, a, a, we use the OpenSFM uh, library, which was made by uh, friends at Mapillary, uh, and OpenMVS. I don't remember what MVS stands for at the moment, but basically we're looking at all the images that are being created from the, from the drone flight, um, finding, uh, uh, getting the poses of those images and finding points that match, and then collecting those and making inferences and creating point cloud in the point cloud, we can uh, we can overlay the mesh of the image of the images themselves and texture the texture using that, and then uh, we can because the, the drones have um, ortho imagery, then uh, the drones have GPS on them, uh, or we can you can use SDK uh, um, or some other ways of of getting that uh, GPS coordinates. Uh, if you want some really high uh, high uh, accuracy, uh, we create a map out of that. Um, so moving on from Open Drone Map, now that you have, you've created this image uh, from, from your drone flight, um, uh, you can actually share it very easily to coming back onto the hot, uh, the hot hat. Um, uh, it's very easy to share uh, open, drone, uh, open Drone Map imagery or imagery created from Open Drone Map straight to Open Aerial Map within the application. Um, there's a plugin that you can enable. You just have to get your, um, uh, 
uh, you have to, well, I'll go to next. There's a plugin you can enable. Then from Open Aerial Map, which is the tool that I'll explain in a minute, um, you can get a third party API token and plug it into right here. I've, I've, um, I've blurted out the token uh, and you basically get this little icon from your project that says share to OAM. Um, and once you do that, uh, it's added to Open Aerial Map. And so real question, uh, real quick, what is Open Aerial Map? Um, this is sort of, sort of the meat of, of what I'm, uh, I want to talk about. Um, which is that Open Area Map is a open repository for hosting and sharing open aerial imagery um, from any source um, uh, that that people and you just the, the license being a CC by A I believe um, CC by attribution um, if you agree to share the license the, the imagery there on that way or that way then you can uh, put the images there and we accept. Uh, anything really, even even outside of a humanitarian context. So there's lots and lots of images on here from from many different people for many different reasons uh, who want to share it openly. Um, uh, so just getting a little bit deeper, you can see this is one drone flight from uh, uh, Ga, 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 sorry, I didn't practice pronouncing that. I'm not exactly sure where it is, um, but a uh, uh, very, very high resolution uh, four centimeter imagery taken in 2018 uh, via UAV, uh, a, an EB drone, a very nice drone. Um, uh, just some some points. You can open it directly in ID or JOSM if you'd like to, to map directly. Um, you can also get the TMS link as well. Um, as you can see here, it's in. Uh, we've if you open it in ID editor, it it overlays. Um, we use Open Area Map. Um, we have a on the back end a, a dynamic tiler. So um, these images are all um, everything that is uploaded to uh, Open Aerial Map is either a cloud optimized geotiff or converted into a cloud optimized geotiff. So it uh, creates um, very uh, it makes it very easy for um, hosting it online for uh, doing dynamic tiling. So we also have a dynamic tiler um, so you can access those uh, these TMS links. Um, and do do the mapping that you'd like to do. Um, uh, this is that same uh, project. Uh, also in QGIS that you can open because you could QGIS can load uh, TMS or you can just straight up download the GeoTIP directly um, and load it in as well. Um, so that's that's Open Area Map in a nutshell. Um, I'll just say we are in the process of a redesign. Um, it's it's a tool that we developed. Started working on in like 2013 and developed in 2015, uh, and uh, made some uh, improvements in 2017. And since then, it hasn't seen a lot of love. There's a lot of really cool technology. There's the Stack API um, for those of you technically minded and interested in that. Um, we are working on um, bringing that up to sort of modern technology and and making it um, work really well for uh, for more people. Um, so yeah, now that you, I mean. I've already mentioned going, getting stuff in ID directly or JOSM, which is what many people do. Um, but at HOT, we are uh, one of the ways that we try and improve mapping efforts and, and increase the amount of mapping that's happening, in, especially in areas that are um, not necessarily um, highly mapped um, in develop, more developing countries, um, places that um, you know the, the the big guys don't necessarily keep up to date very often. Um, so we also developed a tool called the tasking manager that we that you're able to basically coordinate some mapping through uh, basically gridding out um, and overlaying a grid and, and, and portioning parts of smaller mapping uh, uh, and then engaging crowdsourcing efforts to uh, to get people to map. Um, so Tasking Manager being a, a crowdsourcing digitization tool for getting that, that sort of foot, building footprints, um, the really basic data. Um, uh, you can create mapping projects using the custom TMS from Open Aerial Map, um, and then users will select a task grid on uh, to map and load uh, Open Aerial Map tiles in the built-in ID editor. Um, we also are in the very early stages of um, looking at machine learning algorithms as an, as a way of uh, assisting mapping efforts um, and improving data data quality, especially um, we know that data quality is a huge issue in 
um, in OpenStreetMap, um, in mapping in general. Um, and there have been, there's been a lot of people talking about the ways using machine learning or AI or whatever you want to call it. Um, um, but at HOT, we really feel that um, it's really vital to employ this type of technology in an equitable manner in a way that is um, both aligns with our values, but also is something that uh, where we are promoting um, fair use, so to speak. Um, so we're working on an initiative to um, build models for assisting mapping efforts, not necessarily not to replace mapping, um, but to assist mapping efforts uh, um, on the tasking manager uh, using locally driven and transparent AI models. So open, open data, open, um, open source, um, very transparent AI models that are focused on local, local places, not trying to build a global AI model because it's never going to work. Um, uh, using open aerial map imagery as sort of a base layer uh, or uh, uh, training data for that to enable those types of efforts. Um, so that's in the very early stages. We're very experimental. We're trying to innovate um, and create um, ways of uh, reducing bias in the map, uh, of, of improving data quality, and, uh, and of course, increasing uh, mapping efforts. And of course, I, I know many of you probably just use Jossamer ID, um, which uh, is great, and you can just use uh, you can use that directly from Open Area Map. Um, uh, yeah, just a quick screenshot of of what the tasking manager looks like if you've never used it. As you can see, the little square, the the just the it's just a piece of KML, I believe, um, uh, with an embed on the embedded ID editor, uh, where people can then very uh, easily. Do the um, do the mapping. As you can see, there's a slight offset, um, which I know you can work on. You can work out an ID, uh, um, and this is from one of the drone uh, imagery uh, that is uh, hosted on Open Aerial Map. Um, it's it's all quite quite simple. And then uh, you just say it's test is completely mapped once you've done all the mapping, um, and that's a way for sort of coordinated efforts to to happen. Um, and and why do we do this? I, I've kind of been hinting at it, but this is sort of the mission at. Uh, on the tech team at HOT is we pursue just tech, um, justice and justice to amplify connections between humanitarian needs and open map data. So it's at the core. It's a this is the through way for all of our um, all of our efforts, and it's why we are building these tools and, and working on these tools um, because we believe that through openness, through creating open data, we are um, open, opening uh, the doors for anyone to be able to, to map, anyone to be able to have access to their community's maps and their community's data's uh, data to improve their, their communities and to be able to create that as well um, through, um, you know, through drone mapping, through creating uh, open data and to be able to have that, that ability in their own hands. Um, so uh, there's some links. I'll also share the slides directly. Um, uh, if you wanna learn more about drone map, open aerial map, tasking manager, all of our, everything here is open source. Um, so you can check us out on GitHub or you can check out Open Drone Map on GitHub. Um, if you wanna follow up, my email is down there um, and you can find us at hot at hotosm.org. Um, and I just wanna give thanks to my colleagues, Cristiano, Stephen Mather and Pierre Tofanin, uh, whose uh, slides I very graciously borrowed for, uh, for, this, uh, for this talk. And uh, as well, this content is, is open.